Hi everyone, my name is Katie Papke. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Grand Rapids, Michigan, working with Life Support Counseling and Coaching, LLC. I'm also an adjunct professor in the social work department of Grand Valley State University. So today's topic is on fear. I was actually looking up different acronyms for fear because I only know about three or four and I found 84. Interesting. So, of course, I know the ones false evidence appear, appearing real. There's also false expectations appear, appearing real. There's fuck everything and run. That one I know. Um, another one is forgetting everything's all right. And fighting ego against reality. That's one I never heard. But then there's the opposite of fear that some acronyms portray. Uh, there's face everything to recover. Failure to engage in the almighty relationship, that's new for me, and forever enduring, always ready. So the definition of fear is an unpleasant feeling triggered by the perception of danger, whether it's real or imagined. So I think that's a lot that we're dealing with right now with the coronavirus. Is it imagined fear or is it real fear? Did you lose your job? Does a loved person you know uh, have the signs and symptoms? Are they actually diagnosed with the corona virus? Then there is the imagined. You know, I think the most ultimate thought would be, what if I die or what if a loved one dies? I feel that is a legitimate question, but are we living as if we are going to die or someone is going to die that we love deeply. I feel that that thought alone would trigger the most anxious and angry feelings. So let's talk about anger, right? I think everybody through this whole situation has felt some anger, whether it's related to loss of job, the situation that changes, every other email is about the coronavirus, or related to canceled trips, canceled concerts. I know I'm frustrated. The Tool concert just got canceled. Been looking forward to this one. The other thing is, um, you know, any kind of uh, threat related to fear can be related into feeling anxiety and anger. So anxiety and anger are real feelings. They are. But let's talk about the spread of anger. Anger can turn into rage. It can t feel out of control. It can feel scared. I believe personally that the root of all anger is fear. I really do. Whether it's perceived against yourself or others, fear can be real. So am I living today as if I'm going to die? I know anybody who's had a trauma experience where they felt like they were going to die or other people were going to get hurt or die has this is a real a real fear it really is but am i living my life as if i'm living in that fear there are some ways that you can control the anxiety and the fear you know and first of all knowing the real facts not all the hype on the media is true the real facts are really going to come from the cdc and it's going to talk to you about your personal health care and if if the coronavirus would to would affect you, what does that look like, right? Are you going to die? Possibly not, you know? Are these statistics real? I don't know. They're based on new evidence. There is too little of information to know, you know? Also, put the pandemic in perspective. We already know across the, the world what others have been doing, you know? Is that our reality right now? No. The problem with China, Italy, and other countries is that there are times when they had not enough health care. I saw an art, I read an article the other day about getting ahead of the curve. And what that means is the health care curve. You know, there might, this might progress for months. But right now, if we have such a spike in the bell curve where we're flooding health care, and needing healthcare resources, there's not gonna be enough for everybody. 
So if here's the line for healthcare and hospitalization, if we spread out that bell longer, then we can have a real true fight to, to end this, you know? It's my understanding too that the CDC is working round the clock to come up with some kind of cure. Those are really reassuring things to me. The other thing is to continue to be social. Social distancing does not mean social isolation. Whether it's going for a walk, um, you know, sitting outside and just watching people walk by, whether it's, you know, still hanging out on different kind of parks. But of course, you know, that social distancing, again, creates fear. You know, the fear is real, but it's also imagined, right? So like, for example, if I have the flu, I am not going to go outside. I'm going to feel like crap. Therefore, everybody is not the enemy. Everybody does not have the corona just because they are sitting kind of close to you or at least six feet away from you in the grocery line. You know, again, people who are really sick are, you know, aren't told to stay inside. They are going to feel so horrible. They're not going to go near anybody else. So the other suggestions are is come up with a mantra every single time that you feel as if the fear is taking over you come up with a mantra my mantra today is today i'm safe i'm healthy and nothing's gonna hurt me or my family something simple as that what it does is it grounds you to reality speaking of grounding grounding is very important for those who do not know what grounding is grounding is a t uh, basically a tool of techniques where, that you can use to live in the moment. I think it's so important to remember to just identify things that are truthful, perhaps make a gratitude list every day, whether it's mentally or write it down. Living in the moment means look at my surroundings. I'm protected. I'm safe. I still have a job, although I know lots of people don't. And by the way, we're going to talk about job loss at a different video. The, the other thing is, is taking care of you. Self-care is so important. Even though like hibernation, social isolation would be so easy to just put on our pajamas, mm, maybe not eat, maybe try to control things that we can't control, but that self-care is still really important. Sleeping all day will not help. It really won't. You know, so do something outside or some kind of pleasurable activity each day. I'll talk about pleasurable activities and other kind of activities that you can do in a separate video. For now, try to stay in the moment and take each day one day at a time.